Hey everybody. You know, I thought I'd give you a little bit of a little bit of a news item, if you will, in case some of you guys don't know this. As you can see, I have three cassettes, the DVD box set, or at least one of my DVD box sets, the other one still on the shelf and in its plastic seal so that, you know, it's more of a collector's item than anything else and backup in case anything happens to that one. And of course we have Supersonic, the release by Liongate. So you know, again, you know, we have everything that's related to Sat AM here. Now, you might say to yourself, why do I have this out? Am I just showing it off? No. I wanted to basically point something out about all of this. Now we all know this is Sat AM related. We all know this is Sat AM related. Now I want to give you a little bit of trivia. Well, something you didn't know about this, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you have probably uh, read it on Wikipedia already, or have been hearing hints and rumors, and don't know what to believe anymore. Well, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Matter of fact, let me go over here to my trusty, to my family's trusty PC. Here we go, get some information up here. Now, here's the thing about uh, this show. Now, we all know that the show was met with positive reviews. There's, there's no doubt about it. We all know that. However, however, this is stated off of the Wikipedia site, and I'm going to read it to you as I speak. It says the reception. This is the reception part of the Wikipedia site. It says, initially very popular, Sonic the Hitchhog, the animated series, made and sold more non-video game merchandise than any other Sonic products combined through the year 1995. So in other words, thanks to this, thanks to Sat AM, it sold more non-video uh, game merchandise than anything. Evidence, and now it goes on, it says evidence of this popularity exists in statements made by the writer of Sonic the Hedgehog issue 50, the end game arc, in which it was implicated, or well not implicated, in which it was implicitly, implicitly uh, stated that when the show was cancelled, the comic book sales received a major boost from dedicated fans. So in other words, the comic book that we now read back when this happened back when the show went off the air, really started to succeed because fans wanted that Sat AM feel. Thus, this prevented the comic from being cancelled, and it boosted it into, the, into first place as the most popular Archie Comics publication comic book. It says, statements by Ben Hurst, the cartoon's secondary writer, in a, later, in a letter revealed Bill, that Sonic the Hitchhog was cancelled for reasons, Sonic the Hitchhog sat AM, this is what, this is statements by the late Ben Hurst, the cartoon's secondary or most popular writer, in a letter, these are statements that were in one of Ben Hurst's letters, revealed that Sonic the Hitchhog, Sonic the Hitchhog sat AM was cancelled for reasons regarding the portrayal of Sonic, not for lack of viewers. So in other words, but, so in other words, one of the main reasons it was cancelled was due to the fact that Sonic was being portrayed in a way he wasn't supposed to be portrayed. Now, it goes on to say that fans consistently state that the cartoon, was, the cartoon has dark implications, yet is humorous and romantic, letting, letting neither humor nor dark storytelling or romance supersede other elements of the cartoon into the second season, which is considered by some to be written more logically, in other words, more continuity-wise and based. Fans almost unanimous, fans almost unanimous, 
unanimously state that the offbeat humor and slash or lackluster character development negatively affect negatively affect did the second season. So in other words, so in other words, according to this report here by Wikipedia, the basically the humor that was added in for the second season, along with some of the lackluster development on some of the characters, affected the show very negatively. Now, now it does kind of have some co contrast. It does have another section which is contrast to the other sonic media. It says that basically one of the basically one of the things it points out is Sonic and, and Robotnik during the first season are completely different from what you've seen before. So in other words, Sonic um, is not the way he's supposed to be, and Robotnik's not the bubbling fool that he's portrayed as. They do point out that when it came to the second season, the second season that Sonic and Robotnik became more like their Sega counterparts. In other words, they became more of what you saw in the games. Now, it says in the other irritations or little in the other irritations or other adaptions of the franchise, Sonic's closest allies closest allies I should say, are Tails, Knuckles, and Amy. They point out that in the cartoon, Knuckles and Amy do not appear as they were not complete characters yet. Tails was given a tensor, a small role basically, and was portrayed as very clever. Also, Sally, Princess Sally, is Sonic's love interest in this cartoon. None of the other usual romance characters were existent. Now, it does say that the Chaos Emeralds were reimagined as the Deep Power Stones. The Deep Power Stones, basically that was the reimagining of the Chaos Emeralds. Uh, they say they are a source of the Power Rings, Episode Warp Sonic. I guess that's correct. It, said it, 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 it says that if used directly, they allowed Sonic all the powers associated with Super Sonic, plus the observed ability to give someone else that same power through sustained touch contact. In this case, that was Sally in the Doomsday Project. Now, it also goes on to say that while obviously a chosen show, so this is where they talk about the censorship, it says, well obviously a children's show, the first season, minus heads or tails, was Possesses a fair large amount of noticeable content that is generally considered mildly offensive. And it kind of says in a paraphrase or kind of paragraph that will, you know, kind of put in parentheses, it says it is a trait shared with most other, most other Sonic cartoons and anime. Now, it said some sound content, some sound content was edited from the N Circle Entertainment DVD to remove some very mild swearing, some minced oaths, and, off and offensive dialogue. I really don't know what they mean by that. It says, after season one, the cartoon was stated to be too moody for its home network by the ABC Board of Directors. It was decided that the second season would have several episodes devoted entirely to humor with darker plot developments and possibilities, as well as all visible violence, were reduced in magnitude. So in other words, the first season was, I guess, was too scary. I guess was too scary, if you will, for the ABC Board of Directors. Now, it said in Season 1, Princess Sally wore only a pair of boots due to, now it said, due to parental concerns about her naked appearance. In Season 2, she wears her blue vest. 
So in other words, due to parental concerns, the parents being like, Oh my God, naked female! They give her a vest. What sense does that make? If you want to have a fully clothed, you should take examples from some of the people that do some of the fan art with her with a vest and probably some kind of like a little tank top under it or something. Now, it does talk about the canceled season three. It states, Ben Hurst mentioned in an interview that the third season had already been plotted out before the show's cancellation. It said, however, only three episodes had ever reached a concept stage. Upon the request of an eager fan base, Ben revealed the unknown villain would be the wizard Axis Nagus. Robotnik was not killed on Doomsday, rather he was, rather he had become trapped within the void as Nagus's prisoner. And it basically goes on to what we already know, that Snively would rise to power and assume his uncle's title as oppressive lord, quickly fail, to Sonic and the Freedom Fighters, out of desperation, freeze Nagus, and in the process frees Robotnik and the King. Though the two have become Nagus' slaves, Nagus immediately usurps the title of main villain and uses King Acorn to try to bait Sally. Snively reduced to nothing, dispects to the side of the Freedom Fighters, which did also briefly occur in the comic book. It does also mention the, there would be more developments in, re, in the relationship between Sonic and Tails. Tails, who of course would discover an incredible power to save the Freedom Fighters from a great disaster. It is also mentioned that Sally would romance someone or be romanced by someone other than Sonic. The origins of Robotnik and Snidely would be revealed. Then it says Ben sta stated that no scripts were written for Season 3. He also stated that he is then trying to produce Season 3 and has given up. He's presented the idea to Sega, but in all attempts at reviving the cartoon have been ignored. And of course it mentions that he passed away this August. Now it does mention that according to Ben Hurst's response letter to online pers personality Stonique, Stonique of Fans United for Saturday M, the show was cancelled because the time the second season was aired, the producers were in a ratings battle with Power Rangers, which was, the powerfully, which was a powerfully influential TV show at the time. The cartoon did not pull the ratings required to keep it on the air. And then, it goes on to state, and I want you to listen to this, it states, later on, Ben Hurst printed a retraction to that statement, see above, you know, see, go back to the reception on this, or the reception section. It says, it retract, basically he printed a retraction to the statement, stating the show was forcibly canceled by Sega for conceptual reasons. And then it goes on to say another reason the cartoon was canceled was the president of ABC's children programming was laid off during a merger between ABC and Disney and the new executives had no interest in it. This is one of the several ABC children programming shows that have been canceled and left on a cliffhanger, the first one being Scooby-Doo's 13 Ghosts. So yeah, it's kind of hard to believe that Sega actually had was one of the, was one if not the main reason if not one of the main reasons Saturday M went off the air. Wasn't just because of what I read there either, which we already knew, Power Rangers and the ratings that they were losing to them, and the president of ABC's children programming being laid off during the ABC Disney merger. And the fact that the people in charge at that time, or going to be in charge at that time, had no interest in this, it kind of gives you more details. But it definitely shows you that what everybody's complaining about now, about the fact that Sega's sticking the nose in where it doesn't belong, like with Archie Comics and all that, and influencing what happens there with the comic book, well, you can kind of say that the influence went a lot, was felt a lot earlier than that with this. So... That's just some things uh, about Sat AM you probably didn't know about. So if you want to comment down below, let me know what you think. I'd be glad to do a video response if you want, and I will talk to you all later.